what's going on um seems like my few videos are helping um which is great that's exactly what i was hoping for um because like i've said i don't care if i get viral i don't care um if you know i become youtube famous on this stuff i'm literally trying to help and it seems like that's what i'm doing um so that's awesome um, there's a few people that seem to be sharing, or not sharing, but liking the videos, commenting. It seems to be helping them. Great. I am extremely happy with that. Um, what I want to talk about today, and it is a big part of starting up your towing business, is the motor clubs. Are motor clubs as evil as everybody says they are? Are they as bad as everybody says they are? I'm going to share my take on motor clubs. Your motor clubs, you know, the Triple A's, the Ajeros, the Honk, Urgently, Quest, Nation Safe Drivers, Allied Dispatch, you know, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. They are a necessary evil in this business. They will always be there. Um, to me, they have a place in, in business. And they have a place in this business. Um, Ajero, Nation Safe Drivers, Quest, Honk, Urgently. That's how I got my business started. You know, it takes time to build up your social media. It takes time to get the good reviews and the good content on your Google My Business page and your Yelp and your Bing and stuff like that. Um, I still encourage to get that going immediately, get those reviews up, get that, you know, Google presence uh, and search engine presence. That to me is what's going to make you in the long run, focusing on that. But your motor clubs, that gets you your your phone ringing, that gets you out in the into the area you're in. Um, that gets you, you know, figuring out how that stuff works, you know, how you can price it, etc. I made the mistake when I started, and when I made the mistake of I went, or how I made the mistake is I signed up for a Jero. That's one of the largest there is. Um, my person, my area manager, if you will, gave me a rate sheet, said, hey, you know, these are the rates to get you the most volume. What I'll tell you is, you can negotiate those rates. Stand firm. When you figure out your pricing, stand firm in that pricing. Um, mainly because they're going to try to, they're, they're wanting you to do the service for as cheap as possible. You know, they're going to try to get you on that $22, $24 soft service, you know, the roadside service stuff. And they're going to try to get you something cheap, like a dollar ten, dollar twenty-five a mile, is what it, I think that's what it, they tried to get me at when I started, and they did. I I was young, I was eager, you know. I just wanted to work, make money, you know, get this going. But I realized that I could have made a lot more money, and I still did well. I got a lot of calls um, when I got started. Um, I actually made my money and realized quickly that I made my money in out of service area calls. So I wouldn't get the call volume that like let's say a local priority contract tower would, but I got the call or I got I made my money on the mileage. So I might have a 30 or 40 mile, you know, in route style tow that yes, it was out of my service area, but I was getting the mileage on that. And so when I ran let's say four of those, five of those a day, you know, have the mileage plus the service, you know, plus the occasional cash call in between it, you know, running around with low overhead beat the hell out of a day job and help. I mean, it still does. Um, so don't, you know, don't think, hey, you gotta be right here when you're getting started. Um, the benefit with the motor clubs is once you get signed up, and you kind of get rolling, you start figuring out the process. You start figuring out the POs, how to submit your paperwork, when to submit your paperwork. You know, you kind of learn that that business side of how they work. 
and they are paying you know dispatchers don't always have the most accurate information um, so in those regards I tell people you know hey make you know make sure you get the customers contact information call them and verify their information plus it makes you stand out you know when you get the customers information and you say hey this is like in my case hey it's CJ from XYZ you know if I um, if I call them and let them know hey I'm coming um, I'm such and such mileage or time away you know let me get some better information are you at a place of business are you at a residence what's the closest landmark if you're on the side of the road you know just get some better information because a lot of times these call centers they don't either get the most information or you know they might be in a whole nother country so they don't know the area that you're in they don't know if it's you know they don't know landmarks they're not they're not local so they might not know what you know about the area so I recommend doing that um, but you know motor clubs got me started and I think that's a great way to get started um, like I said they're necessary um, you know it's just a part of it it's a good way to get started start getting some cash flow and at the same time use that to get your business out there use that to advertise you know keep your truck and you know keep your truck clean keep try to stay presentable the best you can and then you know use it as a free lead because that's the thing, like when you're towing, you're going into shops, you're going into body shops and mechanic shops and you know, you're know you towing and, and, and the biggest thing is people seeing you know, your service and your company. You know, that's a great way and that's part of the way that I built my business was, you know, I started and just, I guess how it worked out is I went to some of the same shops multiple times. They, I, you know, cut up with them, laugh with them, you know, just be, a positive uh, smiling face you know that was able to solve a problem for them you know they needed to get their customer to their shop I was there I was reliable I was dependable and I was affordable all things that people in the you know the repair side of the world look for um, and so that helped me build my business and so then they started sending me work and then it just as time goes on it, it transpires and grows and that's how you build a business. I mean, literally, it's just getting out in front of your customers and like I said, they're a part of the business. You know, if you go on these Facebook groups and, and all that kind of stuff, they'll talk about how evil they are and, you know, they've got chargebacks and blah, 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 you know, that they're the devil of the business. You know, the problem is this, they have work they want the work to be done as cheaply as possible. That's how they make money. It's the game that we all play. So, would I build a business entirely around them for the long term? No. Would I go out and buy three, five, ten trucks and just run motor club calls? No. But as a one person individual getting started and trying to hustle and make money, yes. It, it would be part of my business. And as time goes on, you can kind of reel that back in and you can, you know, kind of separate yourself. Like now, I'm not even contracted with anybody, but I still get calls, you know, because once you build your Google presence and your search engine stuff, you know, they're still gonna call you because when they don't have a, a service provider in your area, then they'll call you and you can charge them retail so it's a win-win now I do the same money or same you know revenue but I'm not doing a third of what I was doing and that's part of the business I mean now there's more equipment there's more overhead um, you know I can't do a $35 service and you know get my dollar 25 a mile or whatever it is I mean you know retail rates are going up the cost of everything is going up you know that's why I tell everybody it's like Figure out where you make your money, you know, how you make your money and figure out, you know, the cost that you need to make to turn a good profit. But, you know, don't rip anybody off. I mean, I'm hearing people of, in stories of people wanting to charge, you know, hundreds of dollars and stuff. And it's like, you know, that's a little, I mean, I understand making money when you make your money, but you also want people to call you back. You want people to feel like they didn't get screwed. Um, you know, that's just my take on it. So, 
everybody's different in that regard. Some people are just going to milk that bone for everything they can. Um, but, like I said, motor clubs can help you. There is better motor clubs than others. Um, I mean, like I said, a Chiro got me started. They're one of the larger, so they have the call volume. I mean, I've always had, you know, good luck with, like, Nation Safe Drivers. I've had good luck with Quest. Um, I've done a ton of work for Honk. Um, Honk and Urgently, if you don't know, are app-based. They're kind of like the modern-day AAA in a sense where, you know, it's a pay-for-use service on your phone. Um, and you, they, they dispatch it to whoever might be closest in a general area. Now... Now, a honk, I never took the take it now price. You know, that's part of it. I never did that because it was always so cheap. I waited for them to call me. Once they called me and I had an actual live, you know, dispatcher, I could say, hey, you know, I can do it, but I can't do it for that price. And they would say, okay, what's your price? And they always negotiate. You know, if you say, you know, oh, I can do it for 200 bucks, they're always immediately going to come back and say, oh, can you do it for 175 or 180 and you just tell them no, because nine times out of ten, they're gonna, add, you know, they're gonna say, you know, uh, they're gonna prove your price. And sometimes, if I did not want to do it, I would mark the price up. Like if it was in the middle of the night, or if it was, you know, way off, and I had a long day, I'd, I'd mark it up. Let's say that same call might be two fifty, two seventy five. You know, something still within reason, but you know, kind of extra worth it, little incentive to go do it. A lot of times they'll say, oh, well, I'll call you back, you know, if they can get it approved. And probably seven out of ten times they called me back. So, you know, you do want to stand your ground. You know, you are in business to make money. So remember that, you know, don't get greedy, but make sure you're putting some money in your pocket at the end of the day. Um, you know, I do see the honks and the urgencies growing and being more dominant in the markets as time goes on. Uh, AAA, I would not recommend trying to get on with. They're focused on the bigger companies that they can buy out and turn into AAA trucks. They also don't really pay that great, and they never have. So, I, if I was you, you know, that's your business, you do what you want, I would stay away from AAA. If they call you, like a retail type stow, tow, which has happened, um, I would, you know, I would, uh, I'm sorry, I got somebody trying to block me in. Um, you know, I would uh, highly recommend doing that uh, of, you know, taking the call when they call. But anyways, this is just a quick rundown of uh, what I think about motor clubs. Um, I do feel like it is in a, sorry, I'm getting kind of blocked in here. I do feel like it is a, you know, part of the business. Um, and it's something that you can take and kind of grow with, if you will. Um, or at least help you get started. Um, but yeah, hopefully everybody has a good day and make some money because uh, that's what we're all here uh, to try to do is get out and hustle our way to freedom. So anyways, have a good one. Go make you some money. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to ask. Like always, I try to do my best to get to questions um, when I have time. And like I said, just here to help you guys, you know, try to get your stuff going and make money. So anyways, have a good one. Thanks.